Greetings to everyone. This is Siddharth, Department of Civil Engineering, Hindustan College of Engineering and Technology. Today we will see about the topic, Design of Cylinder Columns. Uh, cylinder columns are a uh, little bit like your normal columns, but they have certain areas where you have to take care of your design parameters, like uh, codal provisions are being given, uh, how to design a cylinder column. In this uh, uh, session, we will see how we are going to design our cylinder columns on a very basic manner. I am not going to tell you about any codal provisions or nothing. We are just going to see about the uh, basic parts, like uh, how we are going to design our uh, cylinder column. And the first part of our area is nothing but determining the design requirements. You are going to understand the structural requirements such as load bearing capacity, height and placement of the column. We are going to particularly see about our load bearing capacity, how much load this column is going to take and what is the height of our cylinder column and what is the placement of our cylinder column whether it is placed on the uh, corners or the center part or at other areas then the next one is the material properties like type of our material it is strength and stiffness whether we are going for a completely steel column or a rc column or whether it is a composite column right what is the type of material we are going to use what is the strength that can be expected from it and what is the stiffness parameter of that particular column Right, and the second part is your calculation of loads. Here we will calculate the dead load. What is the self weight of our column? That is permanent load like weight of the structure itself. That is your dead load. And live load. What are the variable loads that can be placed or that, that will be uh, come under your uh, load calculation? That is your live loads like occupant, furniture, wind and other areas. And consider any additional load like snow load, earthquake load based on the geographical location and the location of your uh, uh, building. Right. So here we will see about the calculation of loads. In this calculation of load parts, we have dead load, we have live load, and if, if the area is prone to earthquake, then earthquake load has to be considered. And for snow load, if we, whether the snow load is acting on our area, we have to consider that. Additionally, we have to consider uh, wind load for our uh, calculation too. Right. There are codal provisions for this loads, and that can be used for calculating. Then the next part is your uh, design codes and standards. How to select design codes and standards? We have uh, many codal provisions for slender columns like uh, International Building Code, IBC, Euro Code, National Building Code. And particularly when you are going for designing a slender column in India, you have to follow National Building Code. Additionally, SP16 can be used. In SP16, the design of slender column is clearly given. So we can use that for our uh, design purposes. Then the next part is determining column dimensions. We have to determine the dimension for our column. Like consider the architectural requirement and constraints for column dimension. We have to take care of our architectural requirements too. Like for architectural requirements like the different kinds of uh, uh, shape, size that can be considered for our column dimension. Then calculate the effective length of the column and slenderness ratio where L is the effective length and R is the radius of variation. We have to calculate the effective length of the column which is the most important part in determining the dimension of our column and the slenderness ratio. This gives an idea how slender the column is. This is calculated by R, L divided by R, where L is the effective length and R is the radius of variation. Right? Slenderness ratio is a crucial factor for determining whether the column will behave as a short column or a slender column. Very, very, very important area. This slenderness ratio is actually going to give you the idea how our column is going to behave. Like it is going to be a short column or a slender column. If it is a short column, then that is no problem. If the slenderness ratio is is corresponding to the slender column then the design parameters has to be changed and the total design has to be done as per the codal provisions for a slender column so this slenderness ratio is an important aspect which is going to define our uh, slenderness uh, sorry slender column so this has to be calculated very 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 carefully after calculation of slenderness ratios and after arriving at our dimensions we are going to analyze the stability and buckling of our slender column here we will evaluate the critical buckling load using appropriate equations or software. Right now we have many equations like, uh, you know, this mathematical approaches where we can uh, go for our calculating, uh, evaluating our critical buckling load. Or there are certain softwares like StatPro, ETAPS and Pro and SAP uh, 2000. Like we have many softwares which can be used to, to analyze and we can get the critical buckling load for our column. Ensure that the applied load does not exceed the critical buckling load to prevent say, uh, structural failure due to buckling. You have to ensure that our, our applied load is low when you compare to the load that can be taken by the structure so that it is safe. right? And the second part of this area is selecting column material. We are going to choose a suitable material based on structural requirement, architectural consideration and economic factors. We are going to consider our structural requirements, architectural considerations and the economic factors. So we are going to derive at a material based on these three parameters and the common materials are concrete, steel, wood and composite material. Uh, in India, we, we go preferably for a concrete or steel and composite materials are at the verge of, uh, you know, it is slowly coming into the picture right now. 
So based on this, we have to select our material and we have to finalize our material for our slender column. And the next part in our design of slender column is the performance of structural analysis. Conduct structural analysis using engineering software or manual calculation to determine the stress deflection reaction in the column under different loading conditions. Here we are going to use different load conditions like dead load plus live load. We have IS codal provisions for how this combination of loads has to be used. And, under, and we are going to study about stresses, deflection and reactions. We are going to get these three things for our slender column in a very accurate or precise manner. There are uh, softwares which are generally used like Statco, uh, SAP and ETAPS which we have discussed in the previous slide. If you give the components of your uh, things in this software, the software will give you the stress deflection and reactions. Using this uh, software makes your uh, uh, work very very easy. If you are going for manual calculation, it will be very accurate but it will take a lot of uh, time and energy. So it is better to go for this software areas where we will be able to calculate the stress deflection and reactions for different columns under different loading conditions. Like IS code provisions uh, gives uh, 1.5 times of dead load plus live load, 1.25 times of something into something like there are different combinations. You have to perform all these analysis for all these combinations. Then verify the column satisfies strength stability and deflection. You have to check whether your fracture uh, slender column is uh, good enough to satisfy your strength parameter, stability parameter and deflection parameter. If all these are satisfied, you can go for your next part that is design of reinforcements. Here we will uh, design our reinforcement to enhance strength and thickness. It is, it is not if needed. You have to provide your uh, basic reinforcement uh, that is minimum reinforcement to satisfy the, satisfy the strength parameter of your slender column. Consider using reinforcement uh, techniques such as steel rebar for concrete columns or additional bracing for steel columns. So either way, it can be reinforced, the strength can be increased, but you have to ensure that you have to use the minimum AST, right, which is given by your codal provision, so that the column is good enough to take all these loads, right. Whatever we have seen is the seen in this uh, session is the basic parameters or the basic steps to be followed. Other than this, you have many number of uh, uh, things to be taken care of, like you have to uh, refer your codal uh, provisions like IS456, SP16, so many things has to be done for uh, design of slender column and this gives an, uh, a basic idea how a slender column can be designed. Furthermore, uh, kindly refer SP16 and IS456 for the design of your slender columns on a very detailed or a brief manner. Thank you.